This video is a brief introduction to the joys of enameling. Here we are at University of North Texas uh, Metalsmithing and Jewelry Studio in the enameling room today. And we're gonna uh, shoot a video to show you the beginning aspects of enameling. And we have uh, some special guests here today. Avut will be the instructor and Alex will be the student for today's video. Since enamel is powdered glass with a variety of different metallic elements, it's very important to use proper respiratory protection at all times, just like this N95 mask. It's very important that the metal be absolutely clean before you start enameling. So your first step will be to properly clean the metal to remove all dirt and oils, typically done with a scrubby sponge and soap. Here are the basic tools and materials that we will be working with in this video, which includes two inch copper squares, Thompson's lead-free enamel, a sifter, a spoon for distributing the enamel, and paper to have underneath the sifting. I said two inches. For the first firing, the back of the copper will oxidize in the kiln. You can either clean off the oxides after firing or put Scalex on to protect it. Scalex is a very thin ceramic slip, usually made from ball clay. The most basic way to apply enamel is sifting. For this demo, we'll be using an opaque yellow. The first thing you wanna do is place your sifter in the lid of the enamel jar. Use a clean spoon to remove the clean enamel and distribute some into your sifter. Once you have the enamel in the sifter, you can hold your sample piece of copper, take the sifter and gently tap it to apply a thin, even coat of enamel across the entire surface of your piece. I said it's important to start with a two inch square. Once you've completely covered the test tile in an even coating of enamel, you want to place it on a firing trivet with screen below it. And then completely clean up your single color of enamel, replacing all of the clean enamel back into the jar. If you forget this step and mix colors on your sifting paper, you would replace that mixed color enamel in the jar of counter enamel, which we will talk about soon. When you're ready to enamel, you wanna be sure that you have all the proper safety equipment, which includes welder's gloves, a dust mask, a kiln glasses so that you can look safely into the kiln and your enameling fork to move your piece around. When you're ready to place it in the kiln, you wanna move it very carefully because the powder can easily be disturbed and fall off of your piece. You wanna place it gently into the kiln and close the door firmly, making sure that the kiln is between 1350 and 1400 degrees for the firing of this kind of enamel. While your piece is in the kiln, it's important to stay close by so that you don't forget how long it has been in the kiln. A helpful trick can be to hold on to your enameling fork so that you don't forget about your piece in the kiln. <laughs> However, fencing is not recommended. When removing your piece from the kiln, set it off to the side and wait patiently. Don't worry about the color yet. It will change as it cools. Once the enamel piece has cooled, the true color of the enamel will reveal itself. Now in this case, it needs to be sifted a bit more to get a nice even coat, but that'll happen later. The next thing that's important 
is to enamel the other side to keep even layers on the front and back. This is the removal of the scalex and then we will clean the back of the metal in order to sift on the counter enamel. The next step for a basic test tile is to be sure to counter enamel the back of your piece. It's important to keep your layers of enamel equal on both sides of your metal to prevent warping and cracking. Since the back of this piece is not important, we can just use old mixed enamel called counter enamel to cover the back. When finished sifting, we'll just replace on the firing trivet and fire again. In between firings, it's very important to be cleaning up your work area to make sure none of the debris from scalex or oxides can get into your piece. As said by a master enamelist, Harlan Butt. If the back of your piece is oxidized because you did not use scalex, you can remove those oxides with sandpaper. Be sure to do this not around your enameling area because those oxides can get mixed into the enamels and cause contamination. While the enamel is being fired in the kiln, it goes through several different states that you might not see unless you remove the enamel early. The first state, as it begins to fuse to the metal, is called sugar fire because of the texture that resembles sugar crystals. If you leave it in the kiln longer, the enamel begins to melt and fuse more and becomes slightly bumpy, rem resembling orange peel, which is what this state is called. If you leave it in the kiln just a little bit longer, it will be fully fired and those little bumps will level out. Any of these could be finished textures for your piece. If you forget about your piece or you like what happens when enamels are overfired and begin to react with the metal underneath and change colors, this is an overfired tile of the same color. We're now going to cover some specific information about transparent enamels. It is recommended that you first fire a clear enamel onto the bare metal before applying any transparent colors. It is recommended to use the hard or highest temperature clear enamel or flux first before applying those colored transparents. This is how the flux or clear enamel will look on bare copper. The piece here, you can see some of the oxides of the copper that were not removed before the application and firing of the clear enamel or flux. For transparent enamels, the size of the particles of the enamel is very important to the quality of the transparency of the enamel. And actually, the larger granules are, are much better for the transparency. In this stackable sifter set, you can see the different mesh sizes from 80 to 150 to 200 to 325. This whole stack is then covered with a lid on the bottom and the top to help with the sifting of the enamel. So as you sift it through the different screens, the different sizes of the particles of enamel will remain. Often, a small piece of metal, like a penny, is placed inside of the sifter to help move the enamel through the different layers of the screens. AD mesh is the best size of the enamel particles for enameling transparents. However, there are often not enough of the AD mesh to use for enameling. Using 150 mesh is also acceptable. However, the more finer mesh sizes of the remaining enamel should be mixed back in with the counter enamel since it will form a cloudy appearance in the final fired transparent enamel. Transparent enamels can be sifted just like opaque enamels, but they are typically fired either at a higher temperature or for longer so that they are fully fired and reach as transparent as that enamel color can be. 
As you can see, just from a single coating of the transparent enamel that has been sifted for larger mesh sizes, you get a fair amount of color, especially when it's fired on clear enamel. You can see some cracking because we haven't counter enameled the backside of this piece yet, but those cracks will refuse and be repaired when the enamel is fired again for the counter enameling. We hope this video has been useful and that you enjoy your enameling adventures. And again, please do not fence with your enameling forks. Thank you. Bye now. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.